Okay, delicate negotiations, you say? Inquisitor! Oh my god! Oh my god, it's so long! Holy shit! Why? Why is it that long? What are you gonna do with that? Like, really? Bioware, come on! Like, do any of these ever need to be more than an hour long at most? Like, oh gosh. Yeah, I want to try and find a smaller one. House Amladaris. Sure. Oh my gosh, this one is a... Oh, man! See, like, damn it, man! Like, it may... It, five hours, six hours, fifteen hours, doesn't fucking matter. They may as well be the same damn thing. Uh, Dance with the Dowager, the Alamand. There we go. My dear Inquisitor, Maluka. There was no time for us to dance in the Winter Palace. I don't know why. I mean, there was a whole celebration and everything. Um, but perhaps I might claim that dance you offered now? You may not be familiar with the Alamand. It is the prelude to every great movement in the music, in music and in the game. I would be happy to teach you the steps to begin. Uh, the couples form two lines facing one another, south of the Imperial Highway, between Vershiel and Monstimard, is the Len Basin. It is a beautiful place of walnut groves, holly hawks, and fifth-rate meteries that recently lost its lord to the Civil War. Recently! We ended that forever ago! On the western edge of Len, the hopeful young Comte de Poisson it's like French for fish or something, stands, lining up his little toy soldiers for a quick and quiet invasion. Surely you would not leave the poor boy without a dance partner. If the Inquisition defends Lord Len Basin, uh, Lord Less Len Basin, it might perhaps be considered your property. Be mindful of the steps, my dear. So, like, yeah, it's okay. We'll, we'll worry about Corypheus later. Let's dance. <laughs> okay. Uh, we can take it, the opportunity in a more subtle way if we would directly speak to the Comte. Or, Len is a small basin. We can easily send in enough troops to defend it from attack. So, am I still dancing, though? Maybe. I don't know. Whatever. Alliances with angered eyes. Be a short one. Ah! Could be shorter. But there are probably a few quite longer. It has come to violence. Lord de Rosier has directly challenged the holdings of our ally, Lady Thibault. He claims their ties to the Inquisition are to blame for his loss of honor, which is technically true. His militia is poised to threaten several trade outposts, uh, though his will to attack may not be absolute. Lady Richelieu offers a barrage of names to clarify. Despite being ostracized, Lord de Rosier retains many allies. While you can certainly hold him at bay, perhaps we should revisit another course? Uniting his house and that of your allied the ball uh, might both appease and profit all involved. The daughter, Celeste Thibault, is still betrothed to a Leandre. Leandre? Uh, but this is war of sorts. In such, in such times, it is not personal sacrifice preferable to bloodshed? Uh, okay. It is, in fact, the only wise outcome, and I have already begun preparations. Are we understood? In, expect in expectation, Lady Eustace Richelieu. Uh, but anyway, I expect that while it will not please all involved, asking for a marriage to end... Uh, this would be quickly agreed to by all parties. It is a language they all understand, Inquisitor. They have no teeth for fighting. Well, I guess so. At your service. Have fun, you two! Let's, uh... Do this. Inquisitor, we have made progress at... Uh, Dinan Hanin. The Tomb of the Emerald Knights. Yep, this is where I thought it would be. The structure appears more extensive than we had thought. As my keeper was not interested in this endeavor, perhaps the Inquisition might be willing to aid us. I would hate to return home empty-handed. I trust the spirit of cooperation would benefit us both. Besides, it's rather exciting. I imagine the place must pique your curiosity as well. Taven. A few of our soldiers are scouting nearby. We can divert them to the elves' location. Cool, cool. Investigate elven ruins. A few of our soldiers met with the elves at Dinan Hanin, uh, the elven ruins in the Emerald Graves. Uh, their leader, Taven, wishes to work with us as a sign of cooperation between the Inquisition and his clan. However, some of his party are wary of our presence and the Inquisition's intentions. 
our interest in, the, in strengthening our relationship with the Dalish would appear more genuine if you met with them in person, Cullen. Cool, cool. At your order. How bracing to be in the thick of the game again. The last time I was at Alam Shiral was Countess Letien's wedding. There were a dozen affairs, five secret alliances, and a duel between two chevaliers over the vintage of an Antivan port. But until the Duchess was unmasked, I've never seen the Winter Palace in shock. You don't see the Empress of Orlais almost killed in cold blood every day. Not so brazenly, no. The game's become increasingly insular in the past few years. Corypheus skillfully took advantage. It's disturbing so few people in the Orlesian court were aware of the Duchess's machinations. The nobles of Orlais were worried about their own health, not the Empress's. Some must have purposefully turned a blind eye. There's often room for advancement when thrones change. But let's not lose sight of victory. Your actions at the ball have secured us allies and favors alike. I kept dreading I'd drop the wrong spoon or step on a general's foot. What? Well done. Feuds that spanned ages have sparked over less. Really? Inquisitor never underestimates the enmity of those for whom outrage is a sport. Wow. I'm so glad I don't have to go back to Orlay. I was hoping you'd be by. We've received letters from Archon Redanus of Tevinter and King Marcus of Nevara. For both monarchs to come to us is nearly unheard of. Then the Inquisition's deeds have won their respect. They'd never have contacted us otherwise. Archon Redanus requests that the Inquisition, as a neutral party, destroy a venatory cult on the Nevaran Tevinter border. King Marcus asks the same, but demands we pledge allegiance to Nevara instead of Tevinter. I feel like we've had this conversation before. What course of action would you take if you were in my place? Strained as their relationship with Orle is, I would assist the Imperium. Their friendship is difficult to win, and Marcus is a fading power. To winter is the longer, richer game. What sort of man is the King of Navarra? At this point, elderly. Many fear his health will soon fail him. Still, he is a Pentagast. Their dynasty is exceptionally strong in Navarra. As a Pentagast, will Cassandra be upset if we don't help her relatives? With all respect to Sigar Pentagast, her interest in politics is best described as... thin. Why is the ruler of Tevinta turning on the Venatori? He has little reason to love them. Archon Redanus has rightly identified Corypheus as competition. Few monarchs relish a self-styled god showing up to claim their throne. Tell me about Redanus. Like most Tevinta rulers, He's heir to an ancient bloodline, politically shrewd, and a highly skilled mage. Rumor also claims he has an incredibly soft spot for cats. Well, cats are the shit! So... Well, I assume if we help Navara, Cassandra approves? Um... But we don't get as much out of it? Uh... Well, I guess... Tevinter? I mean, I don't really care. I don't even see really why one over the other really matters. Tell the Archon the Inquisition will do to Vinter the favor of wiping out the Venatori on its borders. Very good, Inquisitor. We'll inform him at once. Okay. Yes. All right. We'll see you later. Let's uh, actually before we go talk to more people, uh, let's get this uh, judgment out of the way. Don't mind my invisible chair of only visibility when you are close by this. First, this wasn't my idea. It is an issue born of titles and heir apparency and... <sighs> Halam Shiral is having difficulty freeing trade routes formerly controlled by Duchess Florian. 
Had she been tried, her assets would be forfeit and considerable bureaucracy avoided. So they ask that we judge her. Yes, yes, yes. This is very serious. Uh, <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh, man. I really wish we had the... Uh... Uh, the more colorful options, like the first game, like, um, you know, like a neutral-esque, and then, like, some extreme types of things, like, uh, acting super dead serious in this part would be gold, Jerry, gold. Are you serious? I did my part. She's dead. That was the time allotted for rebuttal. Her crimes negated any claim to... <sighs> Forgive me, there is an order. <clears throat> but yes, when I say serious, like, I want to act serious about it, I mean, like, uh, yes, we will judge this box, and I am very upset with you, box. Something like that. Um, what the... What does this even mean? Let's get it over with? I really don't like the paraphrasing. Why do they keep using paraphrasing? My decision is to ignore this. Yeah, it is kind of ridiculous. Community service, that'll show you, box. However, we are going to pick this one because it's special. Strangely enough, something similar happened to an uncle of Emperor Leandra II. His trade routes were returned to the reigning monarch. Why don't we just follow suit? A wise choice. Thank you for making it swiftly. Well, I noticed Solus approved. That is good news. Good news. Because it's still bugging me that I haven't gotten his mission in the Exalted Plains. Um, so, you know, it all helps. I need to have a few words with my publisher. The first one will be you, and the second one will be Bastard. They've claimed for years my crime serials don't sell in Orlais. So why is the Council of Heralds asking me for autographs? Who the fuck Sorry, is that? Distracted. Anyway, you need something. Who the fuck is the Council of Heralds? Well, you don't have anything new. Fuck oh. you then. Be well. Uh, no, I will be not well if I damn well please. You jerk. Stop telling me how to live my life. Dad. Hello, Morgan. Uh, hello, not Morrigan. You're the Inquisitor. You're very tall. Mother didn't say you were a canary. Oh, yeah? And no one told me you're a little shit. And just who is your mother? Mother is the inheritor. She who awaits the next stage. Kieran, are you bothering the Inquisitor? Of course not. Did you see what's on her hand, mother? I did see. Tis time to return to your studies, little man. So <laughs> did he see what's on my hand? I don't believe so. I'm calling fucking Shens. How does he know? You little shit, you fucking wizard. <laughs> My son, never where you expect him to be, naturally. I didn't know you had a son. Why would you? I take great pains to not let my own reputation affect him in any way. To most in the Imperial Court, he's simply a quiet and well-spoken lad. Perhaps the heir of some distant family. But he goes where I go. Worry not, Inquisitor. Kieran is a curious boy, but seldom troublesome. Will his father be joining us as well? I have raised Kieran on my own for quite some time now, as was my preference from the start. So, tis but the two of us, Inquisitor. Your fortress is a large place, and you will scarce notice our presence. There's something rather unusual about him. There is. He is a special lad. It falls to me to protect him from anything and anyone that mean him ill. Most of all, he must be protected from myself. No one could harm him more than I. To think, 
Until recently, this place stood decrepit. Occupied only by the desperate and the lost. Now it is party to events that threaten to shake the world. I wonder if it is pleased. It sounds like you've heard of Skyhold before. This fortress was built upon the remains of a site holy to the ancient elves. They called it Tarar Salan, the place where the sky is kept. It is said that from here, they reached up to the heavens to bring them down to rest. They abandoned it, as did the humans who came after them. Bones laid upon bones, silent until your arrival. Lucky. I don't know about that. It's more defensible than Haven. After what happened there. You chose better than perhaps even you know. The magic in this place has seeped into the stones, protecting it from darkness. Those who let it fall to ruin did not know what they possessed. You, I think, shall do it justice. You were kind to welcome my aid, Inquisitor, even knowing as little of me as you do. I will do my best to aid your cause with all the knowledge at my disposal. This I swear to you. It must suck getting handed off to people though, right, Morgan? I mean, in the first game, it's like, Oh, hey! Here! Take my child! And I'm like, oh. Well, thanks, I guess. And then she gets tossed onto the Inquisition. I appreciate whatever help you can give us. Some might think Corypheus a madman for seeking godhood. Yet one must ask what were the old gods? What secrets of theirs did the ancient magisters know? What I fear, what all should fear, is not that Corypheus believes he can succeed, it is that he actually may. Spooky. Not done with you, though. I understand you have spared the Grey Wardens from destroying what goodwill was left them. Tis good of you, considering the weakness Corypheus exploited was their own doing. Still, should a true archdemon one day arise, they will no doubt be needed. Or so they would have us believe. Now that you've seen the Inquisition up close, what are your impressions? Tis remarkable what you have built. I will give you that. Leniana has built a network of spies beyond anything Thedas has seen. All this in precious little time, conjured from thin air through the power of fervor alone. I wonder if Corypheus suspected what he was enabling, just as I wonder what will become of all this once he is defeated. We have to defeat him first, then I'll worry about what's next. Should that happen? The world will lie at your feet, more or less. Beware the heights you reach, Inquisitor. When this is done, many will be eager to knock you back down. You seem to know a great deal about Elven lore. The Dalish are not the only ones interested in the distant past, Inquisitor. Indeed, my skills allow me access to places the Dalish dare not even dream of. The ancient Elves hold secrets they have not yet given up. Secrets about the foundation of Thedas itself. Thus, they are my focus. Corypheus clearly feels the same. I'd like to know more about you. Ah, yes. Whence comes the mystery woman slinking her way into the Inquisition's ranks? Once I was an apostate, living well away from the banal influence of the Chantry in the Kakari Wilds. Then came the fifth blight with its dark spawn, and I left Ferelden for the Empress's court. Tis certain the nobles of Orlais breathe a collective sigh of relief that I am now here. It's odd that an apostate could live so... openly. <laughs> it confuses those who expect apostates to cower and hide. I stand boldly before them and demand to know why I need some Chantry mage to teach me to control my power. They would put me on a leash so they can feel safer at night. I am uninterested in their comfort. Naturally, it helps to have friends in high places. You were in Ferelden during the Blight. The Blight began in the Kokari Wild, so yes, I experienced it firsthand. Indeed, I fought at the hero of Ferelden's side for a time. She is the reason the Blight was defeated. 
I wish things had gone differently in the end. It had to be, yet. And after that, I came to Orlais. The last place one would look for me, or such was my hope. 